This is my Nissan 350Z, and after five years of modifications and racing, I was finally ready to take a leap into some more power. After hours of research and talking to many people with way more experience than me, I decided I'd help blaze the trail of the rear mount turbo. I didn't find a ton of information about the rear mount turbo system, but with the right people and forward momentum, I got right to work. First, I started by adding 1,050cc injectors and a Woolboro 255 fuel pump to make sure we had more than enough fuel to work with. My friend Denny helped me with swapping the fuel pump and teaching me along the way. Denny's a great guy and does excellent work. You'll see them a lot during the remainder of this video. Next, we installed the Z1 oil pan spacer. This comes pre-drilled for oil feed and return and adds extra volume, something that's pretty handy when you're trying to feed a turbo in the back of the car. I unboxed my new turbo. I went with the Precision 6262 journal bearing turbo, gauges, scavenge pump, blow off valve, and wastegate. I'll be linking all of these parts in the description below, and if you want to purchase anything, use those links and I get a little bit of a kickback so we can continue working on stuff on this channel. While I waited on the rest of the parts, I took the car over to TDO Performance so my friend Derek could fabricate the whole system. This was new for us, so I gave him creative reign to come up with whatever he thought was best. He converted my test pipes to V-band connections and used two and a half inch pipe all around. We ran dual pipes all the way to the back, so switching to twins in the future would be a breeze. He made a completely custom intercooler and added the wastegate and oil reservoir, as well as hung the turbo. When I picked the car up, the turbo was disconnected and covered with a bag so that it wouldn't rotate in the wind. The 350Z at this point was incredibly loud. But no worries because I took the car right to Denny's for the rest of the work that needed to be done. We had just three days to put the rest together before we got the trailer and headed to limp mode tuning up in Maine. It was a mad dash and I tried to help as much as I could. I have a lot of respect for Denny as he is a master at his craft and was willing to teach me along the way. We hooked up the turbo, mounted the scavenge pump and wired it to its own power source. Routing the oil feeds and return lines, hooked up the gauges, and mounted the wastegate with an eight pound spring. We completed the work and picked up the trailer for the trip to Maine. After a long drive, we met up with Eric and Pat, who are VQ experts. We spent the day there dealing with a few issues. First was the lack of cold spark plugs and the intake tubing being 2.5 inches, where they said three inches would yield the best results for the mass airflow sensors. Also, we were getting some boost creep, so another wastegate was needed. Even with these issues, we pressed on and made a fair but disappointing 400 wheel horsepower. That's a respectable number, don't get me wrong, but I was hoping for more of 500 to 550 wheel horsepower. The end of the day had come and we headed back to Connecticut. Although it was fun for the time being, I went ahead and ordered the GTR spark plugs and a second wastegate. At this point, I'd like to point out that if we had done a single pipe and a single wastegate, we would have probably been fine. But we're all learning here and we pressed on anyways. The car went back to Derek and he came up with this beautiful design to incorporate the second wastegate, fabbed a three inch intake, and also added some resonators as the noise was deafening. Ah, 
Now that's much better. Now after driving the car and enjoying it for a few months, it was time to go back to Maine to see if we can finally push some bigger power. That hope got dashed pretty quick as the turbo had blown its seals. We suspected the reservoir to have been too small, but the scavenge pump malfunctioned, causing the oil not to flow properly. Eric and Pat at Limp Mode asked if they could keep the car and finish it up. They went ahead and swapped the turbo for a Borg Warner S366 and replaced the scavenge pump for one that they use regularly without issues. Link will be in the description. Eric also helped me to install a meth injection kit to keep everything safe and cool. There's a full installation video for this in my playlist in the description, and I encourage you to check it out. Finally, it was time to go pick up the car and I was super excited to see the finished product. Eric had my car outside waiting for me and we went right into the test drive. As you can see, I was nothing but smiles. It was noticeably faster, begging the question, how much was it making? Oh, that is almost 600 horsepower to the rear wheels. 600. More, oh. more than what you requested. Way more. <laughs> I was absolutely blown away when Eric told me what the car was making. A whopping 586 wheel horsepower. That's way higher than my expectations. I was all smiles and asked if we could get it on the dyno for some official numbers. And baby, these numbers don't lie. The car pulls super hard starting at 37 RPM and goes to the moon, making this setup very drivable day to day and you can get into boost whenever you need it. Now I hope you enjoyed the video and I'd ask that you please subscribe to the channel and like the video. This is a growing channel and I have no plans of stopping anytime soon. Please feel free to ask any questions in the comments and enjoy some of my favorite clips of my car. <laughs> system now that it's complete we've been driving it. it's really good uh, we got our Borg Warner back here uh, but actually hold on let's start from the front so I have a custom-made intercooler here and an oil cooler here we have the oil filter is here with the sandwich plate which fits with our intercooler piping so it looks like that this was custom made and we got a twin section that comes down here. It converges into the, the turbo at the back. Now you don't have to do it this way. You can do a single back and a single uh, back to the engine, but we went with a double. Uh, we were thinking about doing a twin turbo system, which we went with just a single larger turbo, which has been fine. Um, Really important when you're installing these to make sure that you have good placement on your wastegates um, and that you have a little oil reservoir here to capture the uh, additional. Uh, we have 
a scavenge pump here which circulates the oil uh, that's been wired up. It's looking good. Oh, and there's also a breather coming out of this too. That's worth mentioning. So that just does that and that's the manual boost controller. Um, comes all the way back up. And that's pretty much what we ended up with. And uh, we have resonators here, but it's still a little raspy. I want to see if I can, can add another one, maybe in this section here, or maybe right back here. I'm not sure, but we'll have to look into that. But she made 586 wheel horsepower and 430 foot pounds of torque, somewhere around there. Um, but if you guys want more information, check out the check out the rest of the playlist with this build. Uh, if you have any questions, put it in the comments and subscribe to the channel.